my cup hath runneth over with love. Circular One, Drugs Ake One By Claudia Latour and Martin Sonneborn Assange Second edition, revised and updated Now even more depressing Smiley Welcome to this free, horrible audiobook version Please enjoy Free Assange, note he is innocent, although you probably did not get that news, only the fake allegations to jail him via lobbyists, listen. Hier sind wieder John Kleser und ich aus dem Regieraum. Hallo zusammen. John, bitte schön. Thank you Anna. Much appreciated. Well, and now for chapter 10. Wie heißt dieses Buch? Ich habe eines, das so heißt, ehrlich. Ich meine, wie heißt dieses Kapitel? John. This chapter is called Sticks and Stones. I'm gonna break my bones. No way. Yet another labor. You may not even notice, but I've just been replaced by Daniel as voice for the text. Any thoughts on this? I see. So, chapter 10, here we go. The guy with the colorful folders, on the other hand, is a certain Edward Fitzgerald, though not the eponymous rebel who, co, conspired to revolt against British rule in Ireland in 1798. But almost, this Fitzgerald here belongs to the same law firm as human rights lawyer and actor's wife, Amal Clooney, who was audacious enough back in 2011 to take on the legal representation of Julian Assange. Fitzgerald is by no means an expert on everything that is legally possible, but is simply a criminal defense lawyer, specializing in an extradition and appeal cases. Activists and lawyers swear on the lives of their mothers. Besides Fitzgerald has saved a heap of bare lives, fought more enthusiastically for prisoners rights than anyone else, and done more human rights work than anyone else 32. 000 times over human rights work than anyone else. Fitzgerald prefers not to make a fuss about anything he does about everything he does. He doesn't blow his own trumpet, as the British supposedly call it. Years ago, when Fitzgerald received an award for his exquisite contribution to criminal justice, his Lord Actor, Lord Justice Sir Conrad Sheehan, was stunned to note. He could have made a fortune made a fortune if he had chosen to devote his talents to other fields of activity. Footnote 12. For example gambling, fishing and the Falklands. Very expensive US law firm. Fitzgerald preferred not to do any. Instead, he campaigned for example, British grey hat hacker Gary McKinnon, who was accused of hacking into 97 computers belonging to US armed forces and NASA. High Court and the European Court of Human Rights, WTF had already sealed his extradition to the United States where he faced 70 years in prison and a fine of 1.75 million dollars 1.75 million dollars awaited him. Incidentally, this was only prevented by the intervention of the then Home Secretary Theresa May, who saw no other way but to give in to the, through celebrity supporters such as Sting, Pink Floyd, Bob Geldof and the former Floyd, Bob Geldof and the former Labour Prime Minister Gordon Brown, to give in to the public pressure. Footnote 30. The intervention of the now Home Secretary Priti Patel in favor of Assange can be justifiably justifiably dismissed. The Thatcherite Patel, hated with all her heart by British leftists is more interested in drastic tightening of immigration laws, life imprisonment for smugglers, and the Police Act, which threatens protesters with long prison sentences if they cause serious discomfort should, and for the professional shaping of her eyebrows, of course, which she recently had done for £77,000 from the Home Office budget at taxpayers expense. P.S. Depressingly, her limp hair flaps actually still looked as unappetizing afterwards as they did before. Quo vadis, eyebrow design, subjective hint from us, public pressure, most interesting, who was that again, this public, that's not not us, is it, or is it you out there perhaps wink smiley, his extradition to the United States Lowry Love, a hacktivist of the anonymous collective and, by his own admission, a lifelong to make the world a better place. 
He was accused of being involved in an operation called Operation Last Resort, and of stealing military and stealing military and personal data from US Army and NASA computer networks. NASA compromised national security and offended those who protect the country. Offended? We are too. But rather by such an excellent jurisprudential argument. As appropriate punishment, the offended states of America, by the way, envisioned 99 years in prison and 9 million dollars in damages. They still imagine it today. According to legend Edward Fitzgerald successfully knocked this guy out, too. That was chapter 10. Wer hier lacht, kriegt gescheuert. Wir sind bei Kapitel 11 angelangt, John. Jenes mit Hitchcock. Ja, bitte? Grazie. Wer hat dich gefragt, Luca? Has anybody seen the car? Sorry, no, we have to listen to chapter 11 now. Psycho without Hitchcock. Enjoy. And that's really true, because he's sitting in the visitor's gallery of the London Court of Appeal somewhere right next to us, scratching under his slouch hat, laughing, contemptuously, and fidgeting he just mumbles and shakes his head. You see and hear immediately, what Larry Love sees and his hair is not the first time he has seen and heard it for the first time. When he stands up at the end of the first day of the trial to proclaim the Hippocratic Oath, I swear by Apollon the physician and Asclepius and Hygieia and Panacea and all the gods and goddesses, calling them to witness, if I now fulfill this oath and do not break it, may I be successful in life and art success in life and in art, and fame among all men for all time. If I transgress it and perjury, the contrary, booming loudly in the ears in the ears of all who do not want to hear such a thing now, and never, he has certainly given most of those present the most anarchistic experience of their charmless lives of their charmless lives. He was nevertheless not allowed back into the torture tower to the visitor's gallery, although he always put on the right face in the right place at the right time the right face in the right place at the right time, in his trial, too. It was wholly and not about any state of the world, certainly not about a more certainly not about a fairer, freer or better one, but about the intricacies of mental health and psychological illness, autism spectrum disorders and their degrees of severity, the Asperger's syndrome, or nature, world, and, court, induced depressive states, in addition about common correctional and detention conditions in the USA as well as their more drastic despotisms, above all those especially those that are feared under the technical term special administrative measures, as they entail intensified sentences, communication bans and solitary confinement and solitary confinement. Then there are the deficiencies in medical the US prison system and the average prisoner survival rate, and finally the existence inevitably of latent, acute or simulated of the latent, acute or simulated suicide risk. All that, of course, must be repeated again in the trial of the most significant case about journalism, press freedom and democracy, the since the since the year 1066, the rules of procedure have it so, with a slight historical deviation, of course. For this time it is not only the repetition is a farce, and not only the first performance a tragedy, or vice versa. Crown Prosecutor Lewis uses his extended speaking time on the first day of the trial on the first day of the trial for what can best be described as a costly rear-end collision, caused by the Rolls-Royce in the courtroom. The names of a number of expert witnesses on record are mentioned, usually with the wrong pronunciation or intonation or intonation, but gives a shit. It's about Asperger's and and the very tricky question of why only one of the experts brought in of the experts consulted was able to identify this syndrome at all, namely the neuropsychiatrist Quentin Dealey namely. Hm, let's think about that. Maybe because Dealey was the only experts consulted in the field of autism spectrum disorders, and for all the other experts, it would have amounted to an inadmissible overstepping of the boundaries of their field of expertise if they had just casually diagnosed something for which they are not even certified specialists. The hell, Mr. Sartre, is are not the others, but US lawyers in attack position. Just in case you should consider rewriting this one act in rewrite this one act play in heaven. Of particular importance to the prosecution seems to be a neuropsychiatrist named Dr. Michael Copelman, a much decorated expert, court witness in countless trials, 
Professor Emeritus at the Institute of Psychiatry. Emeritus Professor Emeritus at the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology and Neuroscience at the renowned King's King's College, luminary and undisputed doyen of his field, a real of his field, a real authority. In the proceedings of first instance, even the often uninformed Beretza had found a whole series of good reasons and had found a whole series of good reasons to base her verdict on judgment on Copelman's expert assessment and the results of the investigations carried out by him. On Assange, the conditions of imprisonment to be expected in the USA could put the psychologically by now Assange, who is now seriously ill, to commit suicide. Extradition request rejected. For Lewis who in the past had called on Copelman himself as an expert witness. The expert witness in the past, the proven expert is now is now suddenly something of an unreliable imposter. The expert reports he has produced flawed, incomplete and misleading, incomplete and misleading and that Assange is really really healthy as a horse. As befits a standard horror film of the category D, the prosecution now moves on to a crude amateur basement dissection whose subject matter is the personality and psyche of the absent, accused, in a shattering crescendo. Lewis lays out crescendo, Lewis lays his sharp advocate's knife on every rememberable detail of the delinquent's mental and spiritual integrity which in the end, of course, leads to the which in the end, of course, leads to a court proof determination of his unconditional extraditable status. Assange is highly depressed, hears music and voices, you are dust and voices, you are dust, you are dead, we are coming to come for you and show psychotic symptoms, hallucinations, hallucinations, for which he is taking antidepressants and the antipsychotic quichiapine. After being observed in Belmarsh, he was observed to do nothing in his cell but in his cell but walk up and down until he collapsed he collapsed, punching himself in the face and ramming his head and slamming his head into the wall. He was sent to the prison he was transferred to the hospital wing of the prison for months. In an ingenious hiding place under one of his the prison authorities found half a razor blade. He has already had one attempt in which he slashed his wrists he slit his wrists. Again and again he repeatedly called for the Samaritans. Telephonic suicide Samaritans. As it was noted that he thought of killing himself a hundred times a day he thought of killing himself. Citizens of the world, look at this man. Topfit, the brat, the people killed by Lewis and his living laptops. For money, too is decidedly brutalist to the point of being tabloid that can go something like this. Can someone Assange really be depressed? Or depressed? Or not? If, on a sunny day in May, he has milk and a second helping of oranges for breakfast on a sunny day in May, is anyone or not a simulant Assange? If he claims to be suffering from a syndrome syndrome, which was briefly mentioned in a copy of the British Medical Journal borrowed in June was mentioned in a borrowed June issue of the British Medical Journal, isn't any neurological disorder associated with autism already disproved of its bearer. The patient has disorder associated with autism has not already been disproved of its carrier Assange once succeeded in making fleeting eye contact with a stranger. Can someone Assange credibly claim to have Asperger's syndrome? Asperger's syndrome when he has not even been deprived of custody of his first child? Does a person's mere suicidal intent stand in the way of his extradition if there is no complete proof that, in addition to the intent, there is also the intellectual capacity Assange to implement this plan? Finally, there would also have to be a concrete possibility of self-murder, which is not possible under the normal law, or aggravated, in any case fabulous, conditions of detention in the USA. Can you believe it Lewis finally said, is it possible to believe that someone wants to be a suicide when he has several children of his own, children of their own, counter question, can you believe that someone wants to be a Rolls Royce when he asks several such questions? That was boring, sorry, now Chuck Norris. The judge wiped her tears with my checkbook, Tommy Manville.
much quick. John, kennst du den schon? Chuck Norris ist keinen Honig, er kaut Bienen. Why is that? What? Why is that? That. If you Google search Chuck Norris get me his ass kicked, you will generate zero results. It just doesn't happen. Chuck Norris doesn't wear a watch. He simply decides what time it is. You know how they say if you die in your dream, then you will die in real life. In reality, if you dream of death, then Chuck Norris will find you and kill you. For some, the left testicle is larger than the right one. For Chuck Norris, each testicle is larger than the other one. When Chuck Norris does a push-up, he isn't lifting himself up, he's pushing the earth down. When the Pokemon goes to sleep every night, he checks his closet for Chuck Norris. Ha, 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 badum TSS. Hey du Schnepfe, lass meinen Kerl in Frieden, sonst... Anna, may I introduce you to my wife, Kate, maybe by using a joke. What about Chuck Norris to divide by zero? Chuck Norris doesn't climb trees. John. He just Mr. Them Cleason. Down and walks on top of them. Chuck Mr. Norris John Cleese. Two stones with one bird. Outer space exists because it's afraid to be on the Unglaublich, same planet with Chuck Norris. Ja, ein bisschen stelz bin ich schon. Weed es sich aus Salem Rose winden kann. Hey, John, John. Although it states that so wird das nichts? Lassen Sie mich mal probieren. Reaction. There is no force equal in reaction to a Chuck Norris roundhouse kick. Chuck Norris counted to infinity three times. Nein, hat keinen Zweck. Told you so. Who is that? Love is being stupid to 